Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Emergency Descent and I'm calling this Part 2. Now why is this Part 2? Well, way, way back I recorded a video that basically showed you one of the methods that you can use to deal with an emergency descent. You know, maybe we have a fire, or maybe we need to lose some altitude because somebody's about to crash into us. You know, all those are possibilities. But where it gets interesting is it's actually a little more complicated than just nosing down to a specific speed and going it. As a matter of fact, um, depending on the type of aircraft, there could be a very significant difference in procedure depending on what's actually caused causing the actual emergency descent itself. So what I did is I grabbed the Cessna 152 here, and um, we're gonna go ahead and freeze in the air for just a second. And we're gonna go ahead and grab uh, this uh, little POH that, uh, again, you've probably seen this one before. And we're gonna take a look at what happens and kind of what I mean by this. So let's take a look here. So we have some fires, uh, we have some ditching. Obviously, if you need to go swimming, I don't wanna go swimming. Uh, forced landing without engine power. We have all the different speeds. But take a look at the procedure for engine fire in flight. Uh, mixture cutoff, uh, fuel off, master switch off, cabin heat off. Off. Obviously, we don't want to carbon monoxide self, but notice the recommended airspeed is 85 knots, and then it tells you to execute a forced landing. So let's go back in the sim real quick, and um, let me show you what that looked look like. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause real quick here. Oh no, we're on fire. We're going to go secure the aircraft. Again, remember, we're supposed to do a mixture idle. We're supposed to shut off the little fuel valve on the floor here. We're also supposed to pop everything off that could possibly cause any issues here. All right, that's good. So let's do it. So there's 85 knots right there. That's it. That was the procedure for an uh, engine failure in flight. A uh, fire in flight, I'm sorry, not a failure. Failure is a little more complicated, but this is it. So we'd be sitting here at this speed at this particular angle after having executed all those maneuvers. Now you're probably sitting there going, this doesn't seem very fast. Well, the reality is that's what the book says to do. However, there's another line in the book you probably noticed that mentioned if the fire does not extinguish, increase the speed. Okay, let's say the fire's still going. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the nose down a little bit. We're going up to 90, fire's still going. We're going up to 100, fire's still going. And we're gonna hold it at 100 right there. Pull back just a tiny bit. Well, fire's still burning, fire's still burning. So let's go ahead and uh, let that nose come down a little more. Again, notice I'm not executing a slip here because um, we're past our maneuvering speed. And I'm gonna put us right here at the base of the yellow arc. That's about 110 knots here. So this is about the absolute limit that we can safely cause this plane to descend. If we were still on fire, at this point, uh, we could, of course, nose the plane over a little more aggressively. And hypothetically, we could take this plane right up to our red arc there. So I'm going to go ahead and nose this down. We'll pull this down pretty tight. Notice what my descent rate is, by the way. Now, here's the problem. When I'm in that yellow arc, if I make a sudden move, I'm going to tear the wings off this airplane. So although I can totally go this speed, the procedure itself starts us at that very, very kind of leisurely speed of 85 knots. Obviously, during this entire time, we were supposed to be executing a precautionary landing. And while we were having so much fun with our speed, we never considered where on the ground we were actually going to put the plane. So hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, showing you what that looks like. And again, another thing you can do with your emergency descents as well is you can actually look around a little bit and kind of get a little uh, bit of positioning before you begin the acceleration component of the emergency descent. Like I say, uh, as much fun as we got the speed, it was really, 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 really critical that we also considered our end game in the event that things did not improve. Normally what we would have done is we would have found something to land on, pointed at that, then gotten up to our speed. Uh, believe it or not, as big of an emergency as a fire is, there's a pretty good chance that we we're actually able to put it out. Now, luckily for us, we happen to have a highway right here that we probably could have popped onto, heading, assuming that we'd done that. So let's go ahead and uh, reset everything and take a look at how that'd be a little different. Okay, let's be a little more careful this time. So let's say we have an engine fire. Okay, so engine fire. So we pull that out, we start getting everything ready. We're gonna set that up, pop these off. We're gonna kind of kill the magnetos. We're also gonna click the fuel valve here. Now we're gonna execute a 30 degree bank turn as we start to pick up speed. We're gonna to try to identify what we're gonna land on. So I've got a highway right there, which is gonna be pretty good. Um, the wind's coming out of the south today, so it doesn't really matter which angle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna establish that glide speed again. Notice that we got about 85 knots. Um, I would say is, are we still burning? Are we still burning? Ooh, looks like we're still burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that nose down and we're just gonna get that fire out the best we can. I remember the key to any fire is uh, we're basically trying to deny it the ability to keep burning. We have to get rid of fuel, we have to get rid of air, you know, or we have to provide an incompatible mixture. So in this case, I'm gonna stick that nose way down. Now notice I'm not doing any fancy maneuvers. If you wanna help reduce your speed a little bit, you can bank a little here and basically execute wide S turns. The goal here is you're just increasing drag without potentially overrunning the plane here. What we do not want to do during this is we don't wanna do any sudden maneuvers, we don't wanna skid, we don't wanna do 
anything like that. If we do any maneuvers like that, we run the risk, like I said, of overstressing the plane. Now, if it was a very turbulent day, which luckily for us today, it is not a turbulent day, we simply could not go this fast. But remember that fire, it takes time to actually do damage to the plane. So in the time it's taken me to explain this, I'm already down to about a thousand feet, giving myself plenty of space here in which to safely get the plane. Now, the next mistake people make is when they go to pull out of a dive like this, is they pull back too hard. Don't do that. Remember, you're going a lot faster, which means you're more likely to stress the plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute a very, very wide turn here. And suck the last bit of energy out of the plane. Remember, we're still on fire. And now we have more time to react. Now that we're in a safe speed, about well below maneuvering, I'm going to go ahead and let the nose skid and I'll hold us right at the maximum speed there. And we're going to come right behind this truck. Hey, no, buddy. Don't mind me. And there's our force landing. Woohoo! Airborne again. Obviously, apparently, we're taking the highway. It looks like we're not going to get exit three today. We're going to have to go down exit two. And there we have it. Perfect. So you can see the differences between the two is even though we executed the initial descent correctly, the second time we were more likely to survive the plane. Enjoy.